Chris Graves, and no one's on this call yet. So I'm just going to type some stuff in here and get this all going. Let's see. Hello, hello. Hello. Just writing some stuff in here. Discount code. Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for coming in. Getting ready, getting ready. Ro Rochelle will be with us in about five minutes. Mercedes, what's up? NJ saves the day. Oops, oh, that was wrong, shit. Cursing already, it's no good. Oh, God, I should have done this earlier. Welcome, everyone. We're going to have Rochelle with us in one moment. If I can type all of this correctly and get it all in here. And then I can relax and just have a conversation with, with Rochelle. Um, my name is Chris Graves. And I run up, oh, and that's my phone being muted right now. Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> I run a, a, a book company named Hey Rochelle. I'll, I'll sign you in in one second. Uh, name of the company is Chris Graves Projects. We have a new uh, a new company named Monolith Editions coming out now, which has one new book on it it's named um remember the south remember the south by frank francis um and that is for pre-order right now let me just put this thing in here i can't even type 30 percent off code is blue sky okay cool we also always run like a, a sale on our site uh when we do one of these things it's 30 percent off any book on the site that's actually available except for rochelle's rochelle's not available so it's sad about that um Hello, hello everyone. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, I had to start to learn how to look into the camera lens itself, but it's another crazy week in America. That um, it's, it's nothing normal. Nothing's normal anymore, or what is normal, I guess. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be talking to Rochelle tonight, and I just want to say thanks for even considering to listen to us for 30, 45 minutes or so. Uh, Blue Sky Gallery is a nonprofit organization in Portland, Oregon that supports photographic arts. Um, and there's someone named Zemi on the call, and all, also always be chill. They're both um, working at Blue Sky, doing a magnificent job, especially during this uh, crazy like pandemic times as we try to move things towards the internet. Um, but yeah, thanks to y'all too for doing this work and setting this all up and. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get, uh, oh, my, my name is Chris Graves. I think I did this already, but I did it pretty early on. I have these beers with me right here. This is for the night, um, for at least the time we're talking right now. The The newest book that we've released, well, actually, the newest book we released is um, Enough by Laurent Chevalier, like, and this book is running out now. We only made 300 copies, and we should have made more. We only have about 25, 30 copies left. Um, and we also have the Lost set now, which is available. I'm shipping them out. If you bought one, I'm shipping them. And, I, you know, the room, the living room is filled. May, I'll show you later how many books are actually in this living room. It's kind of ridiculous. But uh, they're going out soon. And most are already out. Anyhow, let me uh, add Rochelle to the call. Let's see. There you are. What's up? Are you ready to be, like, grilled? <laughs> I guess. I guess. <laughs> okay, cool. So, I think you're... If, if, can we get some thumbs up if you can hear both of us okay? I don't know how you actually turn up the volume of the phones, but... For microphones on that side, but anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, they got the fireworks going in your neighborhood. So, have you been hearing that New York City's getting a lot of... Uh, illegal firework activity in every single neighborhood, which is unbelievable. I don't get it. Um, so do you, do you have your suspicions? Mm -hmm. Are you going to give it to us or are you going to keep it secret? <laughs> I, I mean, I've heard different ideas from different friends. Um, I kind of think it's the police. 
Oh, you too. I, you know, I, my, do. Uh, I think it's the police because they're they're kind of trying to prove how much they're needed and also retaliate. Mm. This is a this is quite a way to start an interview. I'll tell you that much. I, I dig it. <laughs> but I've heard from neighbors that it's white supremacists. You know, I've heard a bunch of different things. Yeah, I mean, they that do. One? I didn't hear it. Well, no, I didn't hear that one because that's I don't like that. I don't want to think about that yet. That will at some point that's bound, I guess. But ugh. um. In our neighborhood, we're getting them really late at night. I don't know if that's happening you, with you too. It's better than it was. It was really late at night, and it's not as bad. Um, but it was, yeah, it's like all day, kind of all day, all day, yeah. any hour, just kind of like mm-hmm. nothing that I've ever heard before. And I grew up in New York, so it's wild. I mean, three <laughs> thirty in the morning. I'm living yeah. in Long Island City, and they're going off like for minutes at a time and i'm like oh that's that's messed up and it's so consistent at this point that it ha- it's ridiculous anyway uh <laughs> thanks for being on the call with us rochelle um if you would you um tell us like where you're from and uh and where you're living now i was born in new york raised in new york city um all my education was in new york city then went to suny purchase which um, oh shit we right Purchase is real, baby. <laughs> and I live in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn, New York now. Cool. So, yeah. And so you went to purchase for undergrad, I right? Did. And then you went to grad where? At Tyler in Philadelphia. Gotcha. And then I lived, I moved to Panama. I lived there on and off during my 20s um, mm-hmm. and moved back in my 30s. <laughs> why did you live in Panama? Why? Well, my mother is from Panama. Um, I had always visited and always sort of had a fantasy of maybe living there. Um, and it was great. And, you know, it was also a different time. Um, Panama, just like all other cities, has become very expensive. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have my ideas about why. And But, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm sure that it's similar crisis as, yeah. right as well. Yeah. Um, and so how are, you, how are you making a living now? You've, you, you're, you've been out of school for a few years. Yeah, I'm teaching. I mean, I, I gave therapy for seven years. I was in training um, to become a psychoanalyst. I completed my training. Training to become a psychoanalyst is, it's like a, it's like a very unusual type of training and it takes forever and they love, they like it to take forever. They want it to be really long and, you need to sort of like come to understand yourself through the training. So <laughs> it's not really for poor people, basically, um, or anyone struggling. <laughs> it's really like for people that can afford to do it. Um, See, okay. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I came to realize that sort of midway, but um, I have no regrets. You know, it's like, it's like life takes you places. And I, I went back to, I had been teaching before adjuncting really all over the place. And then I just sort of went back to teaching and I'm full-time now at the SMFA at Tufts, um, uh-huh. in Boston, but I, I still live in Brooklyn, so I'm commuting. <laughs> How, uh, do you stay there for a few days or are you going a few times a week? Say you don't go a few times a week. No, 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 no. I would no. I just, I'm just there two days. But it's great. I mean, I, I love it. I, the students are great. It's a great school. Um, and I'm just there and I just like crunch everything into two days. And uh-huh. then I'm back right. home. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, you have uh, like a family. Yeah. <laughs> There's people around. Um, and so during, was there anything that you were going to start uh, to work on before the, the COVID times or the COVID times uh, that... Uh, <laughs> that you had to stop or like I'm... yeah I mean I had fantasies of you know going back to Woodstock Virginia where my grandmother moved to you know my grandmother moved with the second husband she married an American man in the mid 60s and he took her to this tiny southern town in Virginia and I went there last summer to do interviews and to just sort of explore it because she was the only Latina woman you know 
like really within hundreds of miles probably in this really small rural community and when I went last summer it really is not like that anymore I mean you know if you do research or go you know experience the south there's a huge that you know different communities from different places a lot of them work in factories and you know poultry farms and Uh pig farms all that stuff so I I wanted to go back and continue interviewing people and exploring but Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, it's just not possible. Yeah, it seems like travel is, uh, out. I mean, some car travel, I guess you could still accomplish, but, like, if you're going, like, you can't go so far. I mean, I you mean, never know. It's also just sort of, like, people will be very, you know, ambivalent about getting close to you, and, you know, like, people are nervous, and rightfully so, so... Mm-hmm. And so, how did you, I guess, sorry to cut you off. No, don't worry. How did you get into photography? Like, what was the first, what was the first, like, <laughs> oh. How did I get into photography? Um, okay, I went to LaGuardia, and I went, and I started out painting. LaGuardia Community High College. School. No, but well, I, taught at, I taught at LaGuardia Community College. No, I went to LaGuardia High School, the school of yeah. arts and performing arts. And in New York City, I, I just yeah, have to, you know, exactly. we have people, this is a, this is a Portland-based uh, call. <laughs> <Sorry. pretty much. laughs> it's like an arts high school. And um, I went, and I loved painting at the time, and the, the my conflict with painting was that I didn't feel, and I kind of, I kind of have my regrets <laughs> now, but I didn't feel at the time that I could address my interest in social in social issues I was really always interested in social issues the way that you could in photography and so that was really what kind of pushed me away but I think that in a lot of ways I still make work and think a lot the way a painter might like I'm always thinking in terms of like color and form um and also individuality in pieces right you're not really making a series of work that looks like a you know, I don't know what the word is for a work, like, you know, if you're making 15 photographs of, like, little people in a studio with colored lights, like, you're not doing just a, a series that's really tight on the um, the kind of description or the, the, the aesthetics. It's like, like, sort of changing in your pieces yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, I think that I'm very interested in, um, you know, I, I, I think I come to photo to photography through the art lens Mm -hmm. and because of that, um, straight up documentary was always a problem for me, even though I love it. Like I love, you know, powerful photojournalism and and powerful, just straight documentary pictures. I -hmm. wish I could make that, but I just can't, like, I always want to do something to it and mess yeah. with it and just I need it to be like more tactile and I need I need yeah and I think you need, some, some, uh, you need a conceptual edge to your documentary work <laughs> yeah and I think it's something about like fragmentation of the self you know I, I think like you know um someone like myself with like all this different identity stuff has a lot of fragmentation it, and I think that that's very much part of it comes out I think and I think that's why I need to always be like cutting up stuff and putting it back together um, well what do you mean by uh like fragment like a socially fragmented what can you go into that a little bit I, like what yeah. do you mean I think well I mean like people who talk about like um Latinx people talk about like a multiplicity of identities you know that Latinx people are not one thing they are many things mm-hmm. um and if you think about that, you're thinking of, you know, how you're many things, but you're fragments of those things, and they can be a whole, but you can also feel those individual things. Um, so I think that all of that, you know, culture, place, language, all of that stuff, you know, um, like, feeds into the um, multiplicity of the self, but also the fragmentation of the self. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's... Uh, and it makes when you say it like that, that and I picture picture like the photographs that you've made or the, the artworks that you've produced, I can see it. Um, and I hope people 
Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about the book a little bit later, but I just wanted to kind of get like a base down so that people know where you're coming. Yeah. Um, so living in, was living in Panama very different than living in America? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not like an American suburb, although they're very, you know, it's very, the, the, in, the history of American colonization is really felt, you know, it's like, you know, people talk English there the way you might have imagined other people in other places speaking French, you know, kind of like, it's like a way to sort of prove education and status. Um, yeah. And, but more than that, you know, the American um, influence is really felt there, you know, like, um, you know, the military had bases that were gated from Panamanians. Panamanians couldn't enter. I think we talked about this, right? Um, mm -hmm. And like, if you were Panamanian, you were paid in silver coins. If you were American, you were paid in gold. They basically brought segregation to Panama. That's basically what they did. But like, for real, you know, like- it what, years, what year is this? Like, they, uh... they, they, they came in in like 1914, I think, to start the canal, or maybe a little bit earlier and left um i think in 1980 1999 when because johnny carter signed um a treaty with one of the presidents that they would leave mm -hmm. and give autonomy of the canal to panama and so they did that and now the chinese run the canal so is that for real <laughs> i mean okay uh it's unbelievable they leased um, it they leased it so I wanted to dive in a little bit to, I want to ask a lot of fun questions, but I think that yeah. I have to stay on, like, I have to do something before I can just have, like, a, we could just, like, chill and hang out a bit. So <laughs> I, we were making a book together, uh, a, a project that you've been working on for, uh, I don't even know how long, but I'll let you tell a little bit about the project. Um, I have nothing, I have no copies of the book yet. They're still in the mail, but they're coming. Hopefully within the next few days. Unfortunately, we don't have them here. Um, but you have, I have some materials, I and I just wanted to like so. Could would you explain the project a little bit and uh, how you started and and yeah. what it's yeah. So this is the new color, but without the stamp. Uh, great. I did, but I do have that. Um, so so it's like a like a pop, it make a Oh yeah, with this. Can you just show that stamp off to the? Yeah. Oh, so it looks good. It looks so good. It does. Um, the project, well, okay. That's such a tease. I mean, like, what a tease. I know. <laughs> um, it's, it's going to be beautiful. I'm very excited to see it. This is sort of the inside. Like, That's end papers. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. Um, it has interviews. Part of what took this, took so long for me to kind of make this was that I didn't, I wanted to work with these, this interview that my mother had done of my grandmother about life in Panama, like living there. Was it an audio interview or something? Yeah, like it was audio. Yeah. So there's interview and I made it into like a screenplay. It's short though. Um, it's audio interview that I found fascinating when I, this was like way after I knew this tape existed. And then I sort of decided to listen to it way after the pictures were made. Uh -huh. And I was so struck by every question that my mother would ask, like, you know, about family members, like, what was your, you know, sister like, and what was this person like, like every introduction to how she answered it was, was a description of what the person looked like in terms of like how they would be read racially, do you know, like really? their, <laughs> yeah. their hair was, you know, their hair was um, like yours or it was, you know, so she looked like she was from India or she looked, you know, or she had bad <laughs> hair. This is also very common of her generation. I don't think people talk like that anymore there. What, good hair, bad hair? Oh, I don't know, that exists. That I don't oh, know. Uh, the black community, yeah, yeah, yeah. The good hair is a thing. And it's not, I mean, it's not good, but it's it's definitely a thing. It's still a thing, right? No, I'm sure it is, but I think that this was, like, much, much more prevalent, and I don't think it was conscious. I don't think she was, like, you know, I don't think she was consciously talking 
um, to differentiate, but that was just sort of how she would categorize everyone. And I thought it was just so interesting and really sort of like went back into sort of why I started the project, which was really just sort of about my mother and sort of, um, and also society and the effect of colonization in the Caribbean and sort of the internalization of that and how one is very fragmented, which is again, kind of back to the multiplic multiplicity of the self. Um, because you, you know, in the Caribbean, with the history of the Caribbean, there is just so much mixing. And so every family has that and a lot of people deny it and others don't, you know, so I, and, and it's part of sort of the, the culture, um, to and, denial. And Panama is considered part of the Caribbean to people. Yeah. That yeah, it is. Even though it's a Central American country. Because, yeah, it's so interesting. It has, like, Caribbean um, culture, um, like, more than, like, the neighboring countries. Like, yeah, it does, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, it's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah wow. Um, okay, sorry. That we... we... <laughs> In the book. Yeah, I, I was going to start going into a whole other thing. It's like, this week has been a... Um, there's a lot of stuff happening in the world this week that is, like, super serious and um and it's all it's like in, like every time i am talking to anybody i'm talking to them about like what is going on so i'm trying to say with the book we'll talk about all yeah. this later, but, but the book is very relevant to what's going on in some ways very, i mean not you know it isn't what's relevant what, what's happening here but it is you know it does connect um mm -hmm. it's not about america well actually that's not true because then the second chapter of it is here um so yeah actually. yeah oh, before you go on i wanted to say to everyone who's watching if you have any questions uh for either of us please just write them down in the comments or the question section if you see it the question section on your end i can see it on my end um maybe it just operates when you put a question mark in the end of, of your statement so if you have any questions we will answer as we'll answer all we'll be a lightning round if we have to but we'll answer all the questions uh, please, uh, like, please talk about your project a little bit more. Okay, so the work was, um, you know, it, it was meant to be sort of simultaneously portraits of my mother, but also, um, like a like like an like a investigation into sort of this phenomenon in Panama, and then also the experience of immigrating to the U.S. because when my mother and her mother and, and my aunt did immigrate. They immigrated to the South at first. They went to Virginia and Maryland. And then my mother and aunt, like a year later left, like they couldn't, they couldn't deal with it. And they came to New York. So the pictures are a lot about that. Um, yeah. and, and that was sort of, you know, it's sort of like mining my family history to sort of address, you know, um, issues that are important to me but are important to me because they were so important to, to my family really so yeah and would you show like i could you show us two of your like today's favorite photographs from the books like two pictures that you're like oh i made this fucking photograph i dig it okay <laughs> all right let me see sorry for the cursing about the pictures yeah it's um, not okay. Are you drinking on your end or are you the only person? I had, a, I had a sip, but you know what happens to me is I get really red and I'll have another sip. <laughs> um, and so I'll look like a beat as I'm talking. I do <laughs> love this photograph. Um, and would you explain it a little bit for people? Yeah. So this picture, basically, I, the way I made th these pictures, um, if you can't see me, is, um, you know, this was, was my mom, and this is my mother's body, and then my face is sort of, like, digitally placed onto her body to rejuvenate her and make a new character, which yes. I think is also kind of, like, part of that fragmentation thing. Yes, and, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I just really love it because it's sort of, like, the melodrama of, like, the Latina woman, you know, and it talks kind of to sort of the the suffering you know la sufrida like the woman who's suffering and you know sort of like if you ever watch soap operas with your mom it's always some like suffering woman um and 
you know, who's like being rescued from poverty or blindness or something by some rich, you know, handsome man. So that one kind of like, I really like that one. And I think I really like this one, which, can you see that? Yes, absolutely. And it has the American, no, I feel the, the, because there's a little American flag on the top of that picture too. Make sure that you can, because it does have some, uh, some stuff going on in this photograph. So it's like, um, you'll have to look at it on our website so you can see it in a slightly slightly better form before you all Mm -hmm. fall um, I know yeah. I didn't work on my lighting, which was not. No, it's all good. It's not the lighting. It's just you're you're too close. Yeah, I like it's that okay. one because this picture, a lot of these pictures, the way that I would make them was to look either either like the chapter that's about Panama is is really like the oral histories and stories that my mother would tell me over and over again, and just kind of I kind of had you know, like my own fantasy of what was happening there. And then these that were made in the States are a lot of them from photographs. So this one is from when my grandmother got naturalized as a citizen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a picture of her like holding an American flag. And, um, and so that's sort of how I would make them was to kind of think, you know, to think of, of what I had seen, um, in the family archive, like family pictures. Yeah, those two, I think. All right. Well, thank you for that. I mean, it's I put you on the spot there. I, I sent some questions so people know that I won't just ask them crazy shit. Okay. And um, I'm glad that, I, I, I mean, I didn't put that on there. So, but, whoa, so photo book. Why did you want to make a photo book in the first place? What was the, like, like why do you care about the book in photography? Um, it was really a lot about the interviews and feeling that the best way to sort of present um, text and the projects at once was in a book format. Um, And and possibly also the feeling that I kind of had from the very beginning when when I had the idea of making the project that I wanted it to feel like storyboards, weirdly. I wanted it to feel cinematic. I wanted them to feel, yeah, like, um, cinematic, and I felt like the book format would do that, um, because, you know, what you're doing of turning pages and sort of seeing one scene after another, and that's why, I mean, I, I had shown the work a lot before making the book, a lot of, a lot of it was, um, really not being sure how to present it, because I think that, um, the interviews just took a long time to transcribe and understand how to use them. Oh, you mean for in the exhibitions? Actually, in the book format. Like, to understand how to use them in the book format took me a long time. It was actually a friend, uh, a writer, who's a poet, um, who I sat with a few times, (laughs) who kind of, like, said, you know, I think you could do this like a, um, you know, like a, like a, like a screenplay, you know, and it, it worked, you know, cause it, I, I struggled with that for like maybe a year. I'm not kidding. It took a long time. So, um, uh-huh. yeah, I know. I mean, I'm also someone who always has a lot of different projects and, you know, so that's, that's also partly why. It's good. I mean, that's part of it, right? Like, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I don't all, I, I always have yeah, so many. You're, oh my God. I don't know how you do it. You're juggling so many balls, so many balls. Yours. I hope that we're doing them correctly. I think we are. I think that it looks good so far. Like I'm, I'm happy that like I'm just happy that all the artists that we get to work with are also happy. You know, like that makes me. That's the best. Like, yeah, happy. The, just a happy ecosystem of work is is uh, what I'm in this game for. I mean, I do not want to have stress. I did not. Go, I went into art, so I didn't have stress. <laughs> uh, well, you know, there's never no stress, but like, <laughs> there's never. You gotta keep hustling. It's just a hustle. If you love the the shitty things, then you're you're all good. I think. Right. It is. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sorry. Oh, uh, I was gonna ask. Oh, was I gonna ask? Uh, so, did you have a book in mind when you? Because you pretty much put this book together as a dummy before you showed it to me, and I think we've been talking about it for at least a year. Yeah. I don't actually know when we started talking about the project, but um, how long? Like, 
did you have an inspiration for another book that you that you saw before this, or like how did you get to the pieces of your book? I mean, I you know I sort of knew what I didn't want. I don't know that I had like um, a clear inspiration or someone else. I mean, I I did think of some, a few artists that I admire, um, but it was a little hard, and I think that it was partly that I. I needed to work with a designer that I think could understand the work because the, the work can look a little bit um, baroque if you don't understand it. Um, it's and, work. <laughs> yeah, it can, and it's about it is about that. So um, I actually had a, one designer before, and it just wasn't a good fit. And what materialized from that just wasn't working, and so I had to then re restart. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I connected with Ben Salis, who I met through um, a good friend, Rose Cromwell. And um, what up, Rose Cromwell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if she's on the call. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, I hope she's here. Um, yeah, so that was really like lucky. I felt, um, and I knew about Ben a couple years prior, but you know, sometimes it takes you a minute to sort of you know always you know like is this you know will they say yes or you know it was it was it was like that like you know um it's yeah. trying to figure out the it's you're trying to figure out a lot of things at once and you don't want to be like imposing or i i get that it's just like i i, I would i would love to work with that person but i don't know if it's the right time yet i don't i can't feel the timing you know what i mean but i think that that's how it works like sometimes you exactly you hit yeah. it at the right time and then it works. I mean, that's, yeah, I know. And they, and they say yes, and they're interested, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's also really great. Um, so yeah, it was, it just, it worked that way. I mean, it has taken a long time. Um, when did you start the project of sh the shooting part, like the photographing part? The photographing part I started, um, like 10 years ago, really like 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. my, the pictures, um, kind of ended like maybe five years later. I was shooting for like five years. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it is also um, getting really, really absorbed by making films, um, video, so, you know, films that just kind of hold me because they're so, there's so much production. Um, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, so I mean, you, know, you're, you also have a, a moving picture career going. Well, uh, it, which, yeah, I make videos too, and and it, they're just I love making them, but it's just a lot, a lot of work. Like you know, it's like teams. I'm working with a team that I gather, and I love them all. They've you know been wonderful. Um, I work with actors sometimes, so. Mm -hmm like mostly actually working with actors. So it, it really is a lot, but the book was always there. And, you know, the thing, the thing about um, making a book is that you have it or a dummy, like when I showed it to you, and then it's like, I didn't know that you would say yes. Do you know what I mean? Um, I didn't know, know that I would say yes. <laughs> but if How do you ever know, right? <laughs> but the thing is, like, you don't know if someone's going to say yes. So, you, so then there's that. Part of it too it's like you can have it ready but then you know it might take you some time to get it to get it out you know yeah for sure and you know we're of course in the world now of self-publishing which is a whole other option that people can yeah. take That's um, true. and i think that that option kind of grows during a pandemic of sort you yeah. know like I, I think that the book companies are slowing down a little bit i mean i should probably have slowed down i've I don't think we're going to do that, but a lot of people are slowing down or kind of re like, I don't know what the right word is, re-establishing re or trying to figure out what's next for them as a business because money's not, it's not going to be the same. Yeah. It can't be. I mean, it is. Yeah, it can't be. And nothing will be the same. I mean, we're, we're going to come out of this if and when we do to a, just a completely different world. In a different, uh, a different mindset of what we what's possible yeah it's gonna be interesting but okay that's, we're going to we're going too deep i feel like <laughs> well, what was I the first 
Yeah, I mean, I did think of making this an artist book, just to put that out there. Like, I, you know, I thought, if I can't find a publisher, I think I'm okay making this an artist book, because it felt like that to me always, like something very sort of, you know, op- I, I, I'm into objects. So. Yeah, and realistically, I mean, we're, we're working together because we want to. I don't think you, you, there's nothing I can bring to this. I mean, you had the designer, you had the idea, you've now been speaking with the press directly, which is like half the publisher's job or all the publisher's job. So I think that like you, you know, it's when we can get this on the table and I can show it to the people that need to see it, I think that's where I can come in and actually help you with this project. But you could have done all of this on your own for it's, sure. Yeah. Um, and most of it you have done. I mean, you've done ninety nine percent of all of it on your own anyway. I mean, it's really uh, that's the future of it. Like the artist comes to publisher a, a, a big percentage. Like I think that's the way we can. Anyway, whatever. We're going too far. Just what was the first photo? What was the first photo book you ever purchased? Let's go like a little. Let's stop stepping back just a moment. Do you remember? Yes. Weirdly, I mean, I don't know if it was the first, 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 but when I was in Panama. Was it that one? I mean, I think it was my friend Sandra Leta's book in Panama. She's a Panamanian photographer. She's like my mom's age. Um, and she's a really wonderful photographer. And I think I bought her book. Um, and thinking it would be so nice to be friends with her. <laughs> and if Rose is there online, we're all friends with her now. Um, and we probably all. Oh, that's so cool. That's really nice. She's like our art mom. Um, but yeah, I think it might have been that one, but I mean, my first, you know, I loved Helen Lovett, but I think I got that book as a present. Mm. Um, Gunning, who was a professor at Purchase, who became like a mentor of mine. And, and I think this is the um, kind of like, yeah, it's a gray, it has a gray cover. I forget the name of it, but I think, and I, and I, um, I tell this story to my students, but I called her up in the phone book. You know, I found really? her in the phone book. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's but great. Where is she living? Well, you know, she has passed away, but she was on West 12th oh, Street yeah. between 5th and 6th Avenue. She had a beautiful, crazy, crazy, you know, like packed, jam packed apartment. Um, well, you went to her apartment. Yeah, I went to her apartment. Oh, uh, that is I like. Her. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I had to just think about that for a second. That is like, oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, go on, please. Yeah. Now I, I have it in my head. I got it. <laughs> no, because I I was inspired by a professor of mine who was like, you know, if there's an artist you'd like to meet, definitely get in touch with them. And I was like, I would really love to meet Helen Lovett. So I looked her up and she was in the phone book and I called her and she's like, Okay, I'll give you an hour. So I you know, she gave me an hour, she <laughs> talked and <laughs> She said that? Yeah, she said that. She said, I'll give you an hour. She must have been really busy with her work. You know, like an hour now to me seems really luxurious. (laughs) (laughs) So cool. (laughs) And so, and then I shared pictures with her. Oh, really? That's so cool. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) This is like the best first book published, like, purchase ever. I can't even believe it. I mean, my first, I think one of the first books I ever made, like, bought was, uh, Gordon, uh, Gordon Parks. And that was recommended to me by this uh, phot- photography teacher, Burgess, named Shah. I don't know if you remember Shah. Yes. But he didn't teach, like, in the photo program. He was in the photojournalism program, which was, like, yeah. three classes or something. Like, I don't even yeah. know. What, um, but see. anyhow, that's why, like, Gordon Parks is like, yeah. If I, I should have just, what, the, what was I thinking? I should have just looked in the phone book and found this dude. Was he alive? When did he pass he's away? Definitely alive. He, he's, okay. like, a, he died at, like, 100. I mean, he was alive oh, from, like true. five, like, 10, 15 years ago. That's true. That's so he true. was definitely old enough to yeah. call. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Uh, and no, I mean, that's a good one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> who, who have been your, in? well, what are your biggest influences? I know that you're working on moving picture or moving image and still and dance a bit. You know, like there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Who are your like, biggest influences? Oh, God. Um, well, Anna Devere Smith, who's the performance artist slash actor, did, you know, she did Fires in the Mirror, about, you know, yeah. she, I mean, but she has this, like, journalist, journalist uh, technique that she kind of crafted, um, you know, that has been a huge influence, but, you know, then, I mean, others, like, um, but 
photography, I mean, I guess I was really influenced by portrait photographers and coming from the school that we both went to. Yeah. You know who those people are. <laughs> They're always, I mean, I, yes, absolutely. Like, you know, you're, you're learning from, I don't know if you have Marsha. Yeah, I have Marsha. <laughs> Marsha Dude, an yeah. amazing photographer, like a great photographer. A um, husband, husband was a great photographer as well, or is, both are very much alive. Um, haven't seen them in so long. But uh, yeah, sitting in her her class in that submarine room, no windows, and a, pro a projector for like three hours. Lovely. <laughs> um, I know it's true. I mean, I think um, you know, I've always been interested in environmental portraits. Like, I think if I had just stuck with painting, I would have made portraits too. Um, like, I, I love Alice Neal, for instance. You know, she's like one of my favorite artists. Um, there's just so many. I mean, in photography, you know, I love Carrie Mae Weems. Um, mm. She was so important to me. I think the show that I saw, I saw a, show, a, a museum show of hers at the San Francisco Museum of Art, I guess, in 1992. That kind of changed my life. I think that it was her work with her family that kind of let me feel the, and the way she was making that work with her family that let me feel that I could make work like that because you have to remember that when I was in photo school or art school you're looking at like the photographer's wife being photographed over and over again in this beautiful luminous light in a barn with like I know, pictured it before you said it I pictured it before you said it maybe being on the floor you know, like we've seen it all and I kept thinking and feeling to myself my house doesn't look like this at all. Like we had no light in our apartment. My mother has like African masks everywhere. You know, like it just doesn't look like this, you know? And I was like, does that mean that I can't make photographs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, because you hadn't seen photographs like that before. It's just like that. It's, it's, it's crazy that that's a new, anyway, uh, that's a whole other thing we can go into a whole lot. <laughs> No, what do you? Let, let me ask you a hard question. I mean, we're like I, we've been talking for a long time, and I forgot. Like the time has flown by, and this thing will cut off at an hour, no doubt. Okay. So I want if anyone else, if anyone has questions, there's like let's say I don't know how many people are on a call, but if if you're on, if you have questions, now is the time we will answer them. Um, I wanted to ask, do you think that how would you change your school? How would you change? Like what two or three changes? do you think are needed in, in higher ed? Because I think that right now there's a lot of changes that are being, that are uh, having people. professors of color. Yes, that's right. definitely one of them. That's a big one. I mean, it's, it's like 200%, you know, that, that's yeah. like 200% in, at, that are artists, you know. But mm -hmm. all across the board, but that, um, lower the cost. Lower the cost. I don't yeah. know why it's so expensive. Why, why, why is school, you know, $75,000 or, you know, even like the state schools and, and CUNY schools are expensive, you know, for the students that are going. And then they have, since I taught a lot. I taught at, at CUNY, at City College of Town. I taught at LaGuardia. So those students have full-time jobs and then they're going to class on a Saturday. So that's what I would change. Yeah. It should be free. I agree. I agree. How many, how many classes have you, sorry, how many, can you name all the places that you've taught in a row right now for me? Like, okay. <laughs> While the war, <laughs> while the war is going on outside. Yeah. Um, so SMFA, LaGuardia, uh, City College, Purchase, Ramapo, County College of Morris, um, Hunter College. I taught with Roy DeCarapa, uh, who has some hard, who had some hard words right about now? Douglas Park, which I'll share with you privately. Gordon Park. Yeah, he was very, yes, Gordon Park. Right. He was like sort of well, not enamored of Gordon Park. Okay, I dig it. But Roy we can have, have that conversation. We can have that conversation. I loved him, but he was extremely 
I'll say, I'll say right now that I have some, I have some I have some true hate for some current black photographers. I feel it. I got it. I got it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So then, um, Drew, Drew University. Um, did I say Rampo? You and, you said Rampo, but you didn't say Tufts. Well, because SMFA is at Tufts. It's oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Drew University, and then. I feel like I'm, oh, New Jersey City University. I think that might be all. That's eight. That's a lot. Oh, and ICP, too, which is like an institution, not a college. It is accredited, though, isn't it? It is, is it accredited, but I was, yeah, in, yeah. I was continuing it, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, that's a lot of stuff, and especially for the, you know, not, you. it's not like you've been teaching for 40 years. I mean, it's like, that's like, that's a short period of time that we're talking about. Um, so... Okay, so the, we're, we're, we now have this book coming out. It's going to be here and probably, I hope, I mean, we're going to get an advanced copy, so we'll have them at least a few, and hopefully we can give our pre-order people their damn books. Oh, is that more fireworks? Yeah. Oh, they're going wild in your neighborhood. Your neighborhood is wild. This is actually not as bad as other, like Williamsburg. We're so close, though, but we don't get, yeah, it, it was, it's, I was in Williamsburg, and it was crazy. It was Crazy, crazy. You know, the streets. What am I doing at home? Um, are, is, are you are you binging a program right now? We're definitely we're we're like almost out of time. I, I can't believe none of you guys have questions. Really, like this is this is wild to me. This is wild to me that the people don't have any questions. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll just keep talking. Then I mean, there's more people on the call I think now than ever before, and and no one's asking any questions. <laughs> I forget, but um, yeah. Are you binge? Are you binge watching anything right now? I have to admit, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my phone. This is what I'm reading right now. Oh, it's serious. I'm really nerdy. I'm, I'm I did. turn into such a nerd, and this pandemic is like, I can read again. But I did watch this episode of this show called Rami about this. Um, oh. And I could see myself, I just saw it this week, and I could see myself getting very, very hooked. You got to binge that. You got to watch all that right away. I mean, it, <laughs> Rami's a good show. It's called R-A-M-Y. I would say, and it's on It's on Hulu, and it's, a, I think, an FX show, actually, yeah. or something like that. So you can find it on both those channels. I just finished watching it last night, the two seasons that I <laughs> did in probably four days, three days. I mean, yeah. like, I have no restraints. <laughs> A comfortable couch and hours, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, I would say everyone in the world should watch that show. It's uh, well, except for kids because it is crazy at, at points. But that's a good show. I was I was shocked. I was shocked by that show. Yeah, there's not that many good TV shows are hard to come by. I watch a lot of television, so it's like a really good, memorable show is hard to come by. Anyway, um, do you do do you do anything besides the the job at time you're full-time yeah so full-time. you don't, don't have to have like two to three to five jobs is what you're saying no i don't actually for the first time in my life it only took 20 years to not have to have eight adjunct jobs i mean one of the reasons i moved to panama the third or fourth time was because i was going from purchase to ramapo because you know they're pretty close i would had a, i had a class at purchase in the, oh, morning. In the same day yeah, in the same day, uh, class at Ramapo in the afternoon, and I like had a car accident that just changed my life, and I was like, you know what? I think I hate my life, and I want to live somewhere else. And the thing is that I never really thought I could live in another city in the in this country, mm-hmm. um, because when I lived in Philadelphia, it was tough for me. Um, well, but what, what, is there is there a specific tough thing that that was going on in the like? Was there something that you could tell other people to be aware of if they were trying it's to move? Like, to have you been there? And were you there in 1996? It looked like a like a bomb had dropped in the city, and no one, you know, it, it was just so depressing and like horrible. Yeah. And I mean, there's parts of Kensington and Northeast like that are, I mean, that I wouldn't even know if they call it Northeast, but parts are still pretty bad. There's some bad shit going on out there. American cities are fucking disgrace oh can i say that but they're you a total say disgrace. You they're a total disgrace i mean like it's just it, this country we know we know we know what's happening but it's just i just i just it just like broke my heart i don't know new york like 
doesn't hurt as much. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm from here. Maybe it would hurt. That's the only reason. I mean, I think yeah. that we, because we're from here and we choose, we have been placed into neighborhoods, specific neighborhoods. We're not seeing, you know, we're not seeing worst parts of New York City. I don't ever go to the worst parts of New York City. And Philly is a smaller place, and the worst parts are way closer. Yeah. And it's a it, yeah, it's a systemic problem. And Philly has it. You know, Philly. Philly's tough. Philly's a tough city. I mean, at night, nighttime in Philadelphia is not like uh, playing games. I mean, you can walk around Williamsburg pretty much until for twenty four hours straight and be fine. But I don't think you can do the same thing in Philadelphia. I don't think so either. Or any other city, possibly in the country. I don't know. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel as though maybe I don't know. You know, but I. Just... I haven't been to every city, of course, but the major cities. I, I I would agree that most major cities you don't really you can't walk around downtown LA. You're you not supposed walk around. to walk around. They don't design them for you to walk around or for you sure. to, you know what I mean? It's like, so that, I think that that was it, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This is like, it. We, <laughs> you know, we, we've had conversations like this before. It keeps, uh, we can just keep going. Um, I think we should just keep like, I'll ask a few more questions and then like, uh, then we'll just end this thing. But um, do you, this is a, this is a very difficult question. It has nothing to do with photography. The photography talk is over. I don't want to talk about photography anymore. This is an hour is enough for me. Do you have like a, like, what are you going to listen to next? What album are you going to put on and listen to all the way through the next time you throw on any of them? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to also just write it down so that I can. I love music, but my music can be very diverse. Um... That's okay. I'm listening to like, know, like, you know, like that. That's okay. I got the Beach I'm House t-shirt. Alan so like, Toussaint yeah. lately, that album, that his first album, Alan Toussaint, his album from 1971 or 72. That to me is really right beautiful. Now. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, What's the name of the album? Do you know? Um, if it's not called Southern Nights, it's the album that has Southern Nights on it. And it's like his face sort of like looking up. It's like a purple hue to it. Got it. Got it. Alan um, Tucson, Southern Nights is the album and the and the name of the title track. But it might not be the name of the album. I don't think it's the name it of the It is. Album. I've already looked it up. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, got it. We're good. <laughs> I, I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, okay. I've been going, I've been listening to um, the last Charles Bradley album because I didn't listen to it because he was sort of in you know my partner used to play for him and when he passed right. away it was like too difficult to listen to but it's so beautiful actually it's really beautiful and that song um it's right after america it's, it's something like um good oh, to be back home it kind of like makes me want to cry <laughs> oh well, okay I'll, I'll listen to that in the daytime when i don't it's I don't really know. beautiful good to be back home yeah gotcha. okay it's cool good. So I've been listening to that, and then I can always put on, and this is sort of like why I'm I'm so diverse with music. Like I can always listen to the first Stooges album, kind of like anytime, because it's just like it's I an love. Old I love those. I love like that old school, kind of like yeah, that old school. But the, uh, it's all from the same time period. Like I'm definitely like in 1968, 72. <laughs> Okay. I'm very locked into those years. <laughs> I'm digging. Yeah, no, I find myself trapped in the 90s very often. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like hip hop 90s. I mean, it's just like, I'm not always like, but also, you know, you have like Wu Tang coming out with albums the same year the Ravens coming out with albums. I mean, this is like a crazy time period for music. You're listening to Portis Head and like No Doubt or like, yeah. Or like Radiohead. And, you know, I, I, I'm just going in. I'm sorry. I think we should. No, that's it. We can't do this anymore. It's been an hour. Um, it's supposed to be so boring. I'm sorry, everyone. But thank you for. Oh, no, no, no. There, people are still here. I appreciate it. I dig it. People are. It doesn't matter. It's you and me. It doesn't matter. No, no, it's okay. Um, do you have one, one more question okay. before we end this? Okay. How do you think the art world needs to change? You already mentioned. Uh, schools and the lack of diversity especially in the higher education arts um because that's what you know most is there anything else, like art world side art business side do you see the same that's the same problem of course of but course. is there a more specific do you have anything else like is there something more specific uh that you think could change and this be easy because i see a lot i mean i can 
anyway, I think that there's a lot of easy changes that could be made that would not hurt anybody and it would just be fine. But obviously, people don't want these changes to happen. So, which one's easy? Which one's like a give me that? Can I just get that first? Well, maybe for one, you know, stop, you know, well, this is so, but this is such a low shot. I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there. It's such a low, it's my low shot. Like, you know, to not sort of celebrate um, the Yale grad necessarily, but to sort of kind of open up. I know I'm terrible. I, <laughs> I'm so terrible. But to like open it up and look at, you know, <laughs> so I dig bad. it. It's so bad. I did. I it. Dig it. I said it. Um, and this and this like laughs right. This gets you. This goes on your feet. No, no, fuck that. You know, like, you know, you, you got to live with this. Like, you, you, you felt it. And well, that's what I feel. It's, and that's the, you know, in the bottom of my heart, like, you know, don't, don't put money on, like, the Ivy League, you know, recent grad. Like, like look around and, and open up your heart to work that is speaking to the heart. That's number one. And, of course, you know, like, me as a Latinx artist, I think that, you know, the art world has absolutely no idea where to place Latinx artists. It's, you know, I feel that they have found a way to commodify black. the black artist, which to me is just like more objectification. To be That's honest. another conversation. That's a whole nother hour where we both lose our careers. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But it's, we're not the only ones thinking that. Um, no. And there's a higher ed doing the real work like that needs to be done from the inside. And I think that as long as we're willing to kind of display these problems in a public manner, hopefully things can change. Yeah. But I think that this country, like the collector and the art institution curator is going to have to see that the audience is interested because this is again, you know, about audience and about value and placing value and they are two different things, but they're going to have to see that there's value in identities that are not so black and white. I'm sorry, but you know, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. So no, of course. I mean, like we still, I, I always, I mean, and I'm going to get in trouble for this one before we get off this thing. We're definitely getting cut off of this in two minutes, but I just wanted to mention like, can you name, Black landscape photographers that aren't like Dawood Bay, maybe Gordon Parks. Can you name uh, Western? Oh, I, I think I got cut off or you got cut off. Can you name another black, like, can you top five black photographers that shoot the landscape in a way that like Robert Adams or William Eggleston has? And this is just a question. This is not something you need to answer, but I think that everyone needs to start I know answering, asking well, these you, I mean, one of my favorite projects of yours is the you know the scenes like the post scenes you know oh, that i mean agree. you're a landscape photographer well, thank you're, you you're, you know i think so, so. I, I started that way and i hope that you know i definitely see you that way i mean yeah but it's not but it's like it's it's a it's a small it's especially you know body issues are what's in what's in favor like this is what we're but the talking landscape about is a body but not to the people that are putting these shows on for like people of color. Yeah. It's always about the body for people of color. And I think that that's where we're going to end this before we get into any trouble with our organizations. Uh, thank you, Blue Sky, for having us on this call. <laughs> and uh, thanks you, thank you so much, Rochelle. I, once I get these books, uh, you know, I'll ship them to you or they're shipping to you and I'll get them. I'll, we'll talk about this offline. But thank you very much for being on the call with our call. Thank you. All like this. It was fun. Thanks so much. But yes. Uh, please have a good night. Enjoy it and drink more alcohol. And uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll see you very soon. Uh, thank you, everybody. And if you want to discount it, Blue, uh, Chris Graves Projects 30% off from, until midnight. Blue Sky is the code. Peace out. Have a nice night. <laughs> see you later, Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all.